During the summer of 1995, residents of Baltimore, Maryland and Washington, D.C. were the first in the country to see ground-level ozone air pollution displayed on an animated map as a regular feature of their television weather reports. The American Lung Association of Maryland developed the ozone map to better inform citizens about ozone air pollution problems in their communities. With the support and assistance of the Maryland Department of the Environment, the ozone map began airing as a regular feature of television weather reports in August 1995 on WJZ-TV in Baltimore and WRC-TV in Washington. On the ozone map, green represents good air quality. The shading on the map turns yellow to represent moderate air quality, orange for air quality approaching unhealthful, and red when the federal ozone standard is exceeded. The American Lung Association of Maryland and the Maryland Department of the Environment view the ozone map as an important advance in informing the public about ozone air pollution. Through increased public awareness of ozone pollution, we believe the ozone map will foster greater public acceptance of policy measures which reduce air pollution and will encourage people to take action that could result in improved air quality. Today's cooler weather is a breath of fresh air for all of us. It's healthier air, too. And tonight we start a new program to provide you with valuable information on the ozone and how you can deal with it. Now, you may think that urban areas have the worst air, but in tonight's Planet Turk, Bob says the state's hot spots may surprise you. Many people move to Harford County for the clean living but an invisible attacker from the city is invading this rural area. Ozone. I moved from the city out here to, to be away from pollutants. I sit and think to myself, gee, maybe we ought to move, you know. <laughs> maybe we need to go somewhere else. Carol Kwiatkowski loves to work in a garden of her Harford County home, but going outside is often dangerous for her. She suffers from bronchiectasis, a rare respiratory disease. McDonald's makes a milkshake that's real thick, and when you stick that straw in there, you try and, you know how you, you can't. That's how I breathe. Carol's condition is worsened by ground-level ozone, but all of us are at risk. Doctors say even the healthy lungs of Carol's children can be damaged by ozone. The ozone causes a sunburn deep in the lung. We can't predict who is going to be sensitive to the effects of ozone among normal people, but we do know that people with asthma or chronic lung disease are more susceptible to the effects of ozone. Hartford County is one of the worst areas in the state for ground level ozone. Howard County, Northern Anne Arundel, and Cecil County are also ozone hotspots. Ground level ozone is produced when car exhaust and other vapors react with sunlight. The pollution bakes in the hot sun all day. So by the afternoon... That's code red. The bright red is the, the highest ozone values. For the first time ever, scientists can actually track pollution on a map. On this day, you can see the wind push ozone away from the cities and into the rural areas. The people in Harford County get the Washington emissions plus the Baltimore emissions. And so they, uh, they'll see sometimes even more intense ozone than, than anybody else in the state. That's something that everybody should be aware of. You're, you're, that's, that's something that hurts you, and no, nobody knows it. Let's go take a look at Planet Turk. We'll take a look at the ozone for this afternoon, and you can see what happened over the late afternoon hours, some interesting stuff. <laughs> during the morning hours, good air quality, no problem. But during the afternoon, you saw some moderate ranges, and late this afternoon, watch what happens between Baltimore and Washington. Some unhealthful air popping in in the late afternoon hours. And well, this is a map of the air quality. We'll be getting some other data in from the West. This is uh, put together with the uh, support and cooperation of the Maryland Department of Environment, COG, and the uh, Maryland Lung Association. And you can see as the day progresses in southwesterly winds, there are some levels of moderate to just about unhealthful levels. Although now. the ozone map was primarily developed as a tool for television weather forecasters, it can also be used to show how ozone plumes develop and move during an ozone episode of several days' duration. The following sequence shows an ozone episode in the Baltimore, Washington area, July 12th through July 15th. During this episode, the area recorded its highest ozone levels since 1988. On July 12th, southwest winds pushed the Washington and Baltimore ozone plumes northeast of each respective city. The highest Washington ozone value was 135 parts per billion, 
while areas northeast of Baltimore saw ozone reach 136 parts per billion. The southwest winds gradually clear the ozone out of the region from south to north. On July 13th, a very light southerly flow developed which carried the highest ozone levels downwind of Baltimore into north-central Maryland, where ozone levels reached 137 parts per billion during mid-afternoon. The lack of plume movement can be attributed to very light wind speeds on this day. A predominant westerly flow developed on July 14th, causing the majority of the ozone violations to occur east of the Interstate 95 corridor. Areas east of Washington saw ozone levels reach 144 parts per billion, while northeastern Maryland recorded levels of 143 parts per billion. July 15th, the worst day of the episode, saw high levels of ozone form rapidly northeast of Washington and Baltimore. A southwesterly breeze carried the ozone northeastward with a peak concentration of 179 parts per billion observed in northeast Maryland. The ozone map complements and reinforces the Maryland Department of the Environment's ongoing ozone forecasting efforts. In Baltimore and Washington, the ozone forecast, issued twice daily, is color-coded to match the color key used with the ozone map. Following the ozone map presentation in the weather report, the television meteorologist can close the ozone segment with the next day's air quality forecast and tips to viewers on reducing ozone air pollution and avoiding exposure. Teenagers love to talk on the phone, especially 12-year-old Lily Shestag. But each day, she makes this phone call not to talk, but to listen. The department forecasts to green, good air quality for the remainder of this day. On this particular day, a code green is a green light for Lily to spend the day outside. But if the air quality hotline says the ozone is bad... Well, if it's code red, I'm usually not outside. Lily has asthma, a condition worsened by the effects of ground-level ozone. She does not take anything for her asthma at this point. We have been able to control it just by controlling her exposure to the dirty air. In the upper atmosphere, ozone is good. It protects us from the dangerous ultraviolet light, but at ground level, it's damaging to lung tissue. I'm miserable outside if the air quality is bad. And I just don't enjoy myself when I'm outside and it's like that because I feel like... <sighs> Doctors say even people with healthy lungs are at risk. Ozone injures the respiratory tract by causing a sunburn deep in the lung. Ground-level ozone is produced when car exhaust and other vapors bake in direct sunlight. Anything that smells adds to the problem, from your neighborhood bakery to paints and insecticides. Ozone is a real problem in the Baltimore area. Last summer, we had more unhealthful ozone days than any other city on the East Coast. The ozone map, in visually representing ozone pollution levels over an entire geographic region, should increase public awareness of air pollution as a problem that affects us all. The American Lung Association of Maryland and the Maryland Department of the Environment are currently exploring means of making available the ozone map technology to other areas of the country. We invite your inquiries. For additional information, contact the American Lung Association of Maryland at 301-777-7317 or the Maryland Department of the Environment at 410-631-3245.